What do you have when you have an area rich with American history where you have rye whiskey being made and wine being made and they come together? You have products like Mackenzie Rye from Finger Lakes Distilling on the shores of Seneca Lake in New York. Let's go ahead and review it. Stay tuned. Hey, you're tuned in to the Rookie Wine and Whiskey Enthusiast. My name is Scott, and you are tuned in to YouTube's primary channel for Washington State Wines and Spirits, but not exclusively. And today, again, is one of those days. Today is New Whiskey Wednesday, and we are going to go ahead and discuss Mackenzie Rye Whiskey here from Finger Lakes Distilling. It is aged a minimum of three years. Uh, these guys uh, have been around, to, matter of fact, this year is their 10th anniversary, and this was given to me as a gift by a distant relative. William, I want to thank you for giving this to me. Uh, I met him for the first time in the fall during hunting camp out in Idaho, and he went ahead and sent me a bottle of this, and I do appreciate it. So let's go ahead and get right into this review. Now, as everybody knows, I'm a rye whiskey fan. You saw my last video, which discussed the Willet four-year rye. I believe rye can be as exciting as any single malt whiskey out there. Um, and I do believe, to be honest with you, most rye whiskeys, when done right, can be more complex than an American bourbon. So that being said, this particular rye whiskey is aged a minimum of three years. It is right there, age stated on the, on the bottle. Uh, this is bottled at 45.5% ABV. It is matured in 53-gallon new American charred, yeah, new charred oak barrels, but it's finished in local sherry casks. Now, why is that important? The Finger Lakes area in New York is one of the oldest wine producing regions in the United States. So there is some really good vineyards from the Finger Lakes area. So what these guys do is they go ahead and age it for three years, and then they finish it in local sherry casks. Now it is unchill filtered. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now the legs on this, it is clinging to the glass, so there's some good oils in there. Now the color, I would say is kind of a bright reddish copper to it. Let's go ahead, and I'm not seeing any sort of, any sort of artifacts in it. Let's go ahead and take a nose. Now, on the nose on this, I am getting cinnamon. A little bit of white pepper, which is odd for a rye. And there's the plum. And a little bit, of, there's some floral elements to it. Now, one thing I did find when I first opened this bottle back up in December is a lot of craft distilleries have a star anise or a licorice or even a dill flavor to it. And the neck pour on this particular rye whiskey was not very good. I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't mind star anise, I don't mind the licorice, but it did have a dill note to it. Now it's been oxidizing several months now, uh, and I've been slowly, about once a month, I'll take a little bit, maybe a quarter ounce or a half ounce pour out of it, and it has gotten markedly better, especially on the nose. So again, I'm getting a lot of floral elements, cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, and the fruit is very light on it. A little bit of plum, a little bit of potpourri. Let's go ahead and take a sip, shall we? I like to let it sit on my palate for a little bit. That cinnamon turns into a warm, Apple, apple, uh, uh, apple cider spice note. The nutmeg really comes through. The peppery note, the peppery spice kind of takes a backseat. Matter of fact, it almost goes away. And it's really all, um, it's really all spice now. Okay, uh, like I said, the cinnamon, the apple cider, uh, not apple cider vinegar, the apple, sp uh, apple, hot apple cider. Um, the fruit notes on it, sort of like a, uh, the plum note is there, but it's not as pronounced. 
and what has come forward has come a sort of nuttiness to it. Um, think uh, sherried walnuts would be my, uh, the, what I would think would be closest to it. So now on this though, it is a craft whiskey and the finish is relatively short. But what happened, the nice thing about the finish on this particular whiskey is that none of the flavors disappear. It melds together. They've done a nice job in keeping the flavors together on this. Let's go ahead and take a little, a little bit more sip here. Yeah. That spiciness comes out right up front and then everything mellows out to a relatively short finish. Now, what am I going to grade this? I'm going to grade this a solid 84 out of 100. But there's a catch to this one. And I found out um, when I was taking a sip several months, I was just sitting around the table, just kind of uh, having it. Now, my wife and the, my family, we're all on the keto diet. So we've been really taking our sugars and everything out of our diet over the last year. It's been really great for us. But one of the things that you have to do is if you have a chocolate fix, you kind of have to go with the really bitter chocolate. And what I've done here is this is 90% cacao. This is lint chocolate. And I had it in the freezer and I've had it set out for a few minutes here. Let me go ahead. What I accidentally found out with this particular rye whiskey, and it's not happened with any other one, is this goes really well with dark chocolate. Take the dark chocolate. The dark chocolate now explodes in your mouth. This is some, and it's not, and I don't get this with a lot of other whiskeys. I don't get it with my Willet. I don't get it with my Woodenville. I don't get it with Michters. On those are all rise. I certainly don't get it with a lot of my scotches. And I do have a one or two bourbons where it comes close. But guys, if you're listening to me at Finger Lakes, you have to put 90% cacao chocolate with this pairing. That 84 that I said out of 100, if you're eating this with dark chocolate, holy smokes, it now bumps it up to an 88, 89. The, the uh, floral notes come back out, uh, really pronounced. That spice, it just hits your palate. With the chocolate, mixes with the chocolate, it's really, really good. So anyways, you know, I gotta say, um, and the other thing, oh, I got, I was talking through Facebook with uh, the people at Finger Lakes today. For the 10 year anniversary, they are coming out for all of you American single malt fans. They are coming out with a 10 year old malted barley in September. So take, they're saying that it might be the oldest age stated single malt in the United States. They're gonna look into that, but definitely in New York. So looking forward to seeing, and I'm hoping to get a bottle of that single malt barley because American single malts are awesome. Um, anyways, listen, thank you everybody for uh, tuning in. Please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button on the, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Um, go ahead and share this video. Have you had Mackenzie's Straight Rye from Finger Lakes Distilling? Have you had anything else from Finger Lakes Distilling? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this content, please go ahead and think about subscribing. When you do subscribe, go ahead and hit the bell icon right next to it there. That's going to go ahead and notify you next time I go ahead and upload something like this. That way you guys can see new content. Anyways, as I always like to say, please drink responsibly. Life is too short for either bad wine or bad whiskey. Finger Lakes, you've done a good job. Congratulations on your 10 years. Here's to another 10 year, uh, another 10 years down the road. So cheers.
Now I gotta go hide the uh, chocolate, make sure my wife doesn't see that I 